Rain, the welcome sight of dark monsoon clouds, brings joy to every heart. In the Indian subcontinent, rains are essential for a successful agricultural season. According to a report of National Rain-Fed Area Authority, NRAA 2012, rain-fed areas currently constitute 55% of the net zone area of India. Irrigation and the management of water resources thus assumes significance in ascertaining not only the value of agricultural land but also the crops that can be cultivated. Depending on the type of land and rainfall pattern, communities across the country have developed their own means of conserving water and regulating its use. Tribal cultivators in particular have developed several methods of irrigation and water management. The Langiosora community of southern Odisha is particularly adept in terrace cultivation of paddy and the management of water to irrigate these fields. Living in the hills of the eastern ghats of Gajapati and Raigara districts of Odisha, the Langiosora are part of the larger Sora community. While in the past, the community relied on shifting and terrace cultivation. Today, lowland cultivation and horticulture, particularly cashew plantation, is also done. Living in a rain-fed area, the Langiosora have a deep understanding of the ecology that sustains their community. Irrigation is limited in scale, with embankments being constructed and small streams diverted to small man-made reservoirs. To the Langia Sora, there are several types of land. The Sweden plots, paddy lands, foothill plains, and kitchen gardens. The uppermost portion of the hill is where forest cover along with grasses and miscellaneous vegetation is found. Below this, Sweden plots are prepared by clearing the forest on a hillside. 
In the past, the community practiced mainly shifting cultivation. During the monsoon, rainwater washed away much of the soil. To prevent this, the Langiasaura then began making stone buns, which gradually led to the construction of terrace fields. This system is more than 200 years old. It is long that uh, some people have migrated to the northeast, Saura people, to work in the tea gardens during British time, British regime. And uh, in those areas, they have learned the art of making terraces. Because in those areas, terrace cultivation was being practiced since ages. So they found that the system will be quite suitable to their area. So they learned the technique, came back to their villages and adapted it. These fields not only restrict soil erosion, but also allow for the optimal use of water resources, which would otherwise run off. Today, while shifting cultivation of millets is undertaken close to the hilltop, the terrace fields are used for the cultivation of paddy, as are the foothill plains. The Langiasaura settlement may be located in any of these zones. Soil is classified based on its location and characteristics. Clay-like soil is found in the lowlands, wetlands and stream sheds and is good for growing paddy. Sandy, loamy soil is found in river banks, foothill plains and terrace fields and can support any kind of crop. Lateritic soil is found on the hills and is of poor quality, able to only support millets and oil seeds. Similarly, water is also of different types. During the rainy season, water running down from the hill slopes washes away the nutrients from the topsoil and must thus be arrested within the terraces as it will help in crop growth. Water flowing through natural courses like streams is not nutrient rich and thus can be channelized through the terraces without disturbing its natural course. Finally, water released from in between the rocks is to be used for drinking and is stored in shallow wells and water holes. The Langiasaura also regard the natural elements, hills, forests, land, water, landscapes, streams and rivers as gods and goddesses. The community's rituals, which follow their agricultural calendar, demonstrate these beliefs. For example, Labsum is worshipped for the fertility of the soil. The hill deity Manisum and Idaisum are worshipped at the Sweden lands before the harvest. Also offerings may be made to Jarasum, the water deity, to protect the health of children who will bathe in the chilly waters of the hill streams. This well-defined system extends also to the ownership of land. Natural resources such as common lands, forests, streams and uncultivated lands are the property of the entire community. The village head distributes the land among the Birinda or the extended families of the village. It is then divided internally among families. Every family is given land based on their ability to cultivate it. At the same time, if they fail to do so, the village council may reallocate the land to another. This system ensures that the land is cultivated and if not so, it is still maintained so that adjoining lands benefit from the continued ecologic balance and remain cultivable.
The Langeosauras believe that with careful management, a perishable resource can be converted into a renewable one. One can see this worldview at work in the way the Langeosaura construct their terrace fields and irrigate them. To begin with, the high slopes are never slashed. Instead, the natural vegetation is preserved or tree crops like cashew and mango are grown. This vegetation helps break the velocity of water running down the hill slope during heavy rains and prevents soil erosion. The contour terraces are constructed using stone buns. The foundation stones of the bund are placed six inches within the soil for stability. This helps the bund withstand the velocity of runoff water. The foundation stones are chosen to be angular so that they mesh well into one another and do not roll. The rocks used for this purpose are never excavated from within the soil to maintain the stability of the hill face. On a high slope, the buns are laid out in close proximity of about 10 feet and as the slope decreases, this distance increases to 70 or 80 feet. Thus the terrace beds are wider in the foothills than close to the hilltop. The bund is about a meter in width at the base and tapers to about 1.5 feet on the top. This construction is carried out without the use of masonry tools to measure and straighten the buns. Experience in embankment construction allows the Langeosaura to construct strong stone buns with uncanny accuracy as to the load they will have to bear from running water. The construction of the terraces is so skillfully done that no soil is carried down with water. Channels control the flow of water from one terrace to another. This method avoids flooding of the terraced fields and instead water trickles from level to level through stone fencing and ultimately flows down to the lands in the plains. The terrace beds are also constructed so that the inlet end gently slopes down to the outlet end. Thus water can slowly move through the field before being released through the outlet. The inlet is positioned diagonally opposite the outlet so that the soil can absorb the maximum moisture. This also prevents the formation of gullies that facilitate soil erosion. Another interesting aspect of terrace cultivation by the Langeosaura is their practice of ploughing across and not along the slope of the hillside. This is done to prevent runoff water making channels inside the field along plough marks and loosening the soil. The preference for terrace cultivation by the Langeosaura arises from recognition that terrace construction is a one-time affair and is thus lower in labourer requirement than shifting cultivation. The terrace fields are owned by individual families with the sons and unmarried daughters inheriting the lands of their father. However, all community members help in the management of soil and water as a collective effort. The indigenous systems of land and water management of the Langeosaura demonstrates their knowledge regarding cultivation in the hills and the range of situations, problems, opportunities and innovative technologies that can arise from it. And interestingly, within these 200 years, no drought or crop failure has taken place uh, in the terrace cultivation areas. This indigenous knowledge is invaluable not only to managing the ecology of this region but also to understand the impact of changes taking place in this region due to increasing human intervention.
the practices of the Langia Sora offer opportunities to other hill communities to learn and enhance their capabilities. They also signal the possibility of improving and refining these practices to further benefit the Langia Sora community.